I'm starting a new project today. I've been commissioned by Exeter Canal and Key Trust to transform one of the rooms in this building, this one up here, into a giant camera. Uh, and I'm going to use it to make a series of pictures. And this is the room that we're going to turn into a camera. And here is our view. The first thing I need to do is load in all my equipment um, and this is all the stuff that I'll be using to undertake the project. Right, that's all the stuff we need. Frame for the lens, cardboard, lenses, box of tricks, troughs, board to hold the paper, chemicals, and wrap. Now all we need to do is load all of this, not that bike, all of this stuff up two flights of stairs. Got all the stuff loaded up here now, so time to turn this little pokey room into a camera. The first thing that we need to do is construct this frame. Um, that I've made that holds these boards which hold the photographic paper. So let's put this together now. This is the board that's going to hold the paper. Um, I've made this out of various things actually. This is a bit of foam core board with a self-adhesive roll-on magnetic front. Um, just a bit of batten to give it some strength. And the whole frame is made out of these components that I found. It's from a German company that make parts for factory automation systems. So these are things that are used to build assembly lines and things like that. Um, but they're really good because they can come apart and you can reconfigure it in all sorts of different ways. The whole thing rises up and down. And the great thing about this is it has tilt shift ability so I can play with my depth of field. Um, and yeah, it's just a really portable um, and kind of practical solution to needing a giant board that holds 50 by 70 inch sheets of paper. Um, got a couple of little bits to finish and, and attach to this, um, but we're almost there. And the last thing that we've done to this is just add these little runners along the side. So these are just cut out of foam core um, sheets, basically. And then the paper will slide through here and it'll hold it in place. So when this is sitting up the right way, I can just take out the paper, slide it through here, and it should stay in place. Right, I'm just putting together the lens holder now. I'm using really similar stuff um, to what this frame is built out of, aluminium tubes, these various components, um, and as I mentioned before, this stuff's great because you can just fix it into all sorts of different positions. So I've just rebuilt this basically to fit in this um, on this windowsill to hold in the lens nice and safely. Um, yeah, and here we go. The lens is now in place on the lens board, which is attached to our lens frame. And if we have a look through here. Now we can see our view next to key. Just a couple more things to do then to get the space ready to take pictures. Um, Raph is doing a sterling job of blacking out the window here using plenty of gaffer tape and cardboard as usual um, and just sealing up any light leaks making sure um, that's all nice and light tight. And then I've got my chemical troughs down here on the floor. A um, bit of a confined space we're working in today, so we'll spread them around a bit, but we should be fine. Um, this is going to be a pre-wash, developer, stop, and fixer. And then downstairs, there's a sort of wash room that I can use to rinse out the prints afterwards. So a couple more things to do, and um, we'll be ready to shoot. I'm 
I've just added to the back of the lens here, um, this is a gradiated neutral density filter. So if I hold it up to the white, you can see that the top half is clear, the bottom half has this um, dark tint to it. So this is to account for the fact that the sky is obviously a lot brighter than the ground is. So if we were to expose for the sky and get all that nice detail in the clouds, then the ground's going to be really underexposed. It's not going to get enough light. And if we were to expose for the ground and get all the detail in the buildings and the brickwork, then the sky is going to be overexposed, so bleached out and white. So it's kind of like a gradiated pair of sunglasses in a way. There's a tint to this section, which makes it darker, so it reduces the amount of light coming through here and hitting the paper here where the clouds will be. And then the top half is clear, so there's no tint to that. So the light comes through uninterrupted and hits the top of the paper here where the buildings are, and we should get a better, uh, more even range of exposure across the print. And here's our incredibly high-tech shutter. Open and close. I'm just mixing up my chemicals now. So I've got my developer, stop and fix. Uh, I'm going to mix about two litres um, of each of these up, which will be enough to sit at the bottom of the trough to roll the paper through and process them effectively. All our chemistry is mixed up now and in the troughs. So we've got a pre-wash here, dev, stop, fixer, and then a, another water bath there just to soak the prints afterwards before we rinse them. Lens is in place, shutter's ready, neutral density filter's on. So, we just need to turn off the lights. There's our lovely view, and we're ready to take a picture. The lens I'm using today is a um, 70 inch Goers Apo Arta lens. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and the great thing about this lens is it has this absolutely huge image circle object. So if I just zoom the camera out, then you can see it covers a really good proportion of this board. Um, the board is 50 by 100 inches. Um, so you get a good coverage of, I don't know, 50 by 60 inches on this. Obviously you can see the edge of the, um, the lens vignette coming in there. So I'll be sort of cropping the picture down in the center, but it's a really nice coverage. I'm currently doing a couple of test strips. So there's two strips of paper here, as you can see. So I'm gonna do one for one minute, the other for two minutes at F64. Um, just, it's a guess really, just a starting point. Um, so we'll expose these, develop them, and see how we get on. I have my series of test strips developed here. The first two I did were overexposed, so I've changed things up a little bit. Um, F64, 30 seconds, too bright. So I stopped down the lens at F90, still a little bit too bright. I went down to 10 seconds, that was too dark. So 20 seconds at F90 seems just about right. So I'm gonna do a big print now, F90, 20 seconds. I've just made the exposure and now I'm currently developing the prints, which involves rolling them through troughs, uh, the troughs of chemicals that I've got set up. Uh, obviously, normally with a you know smaller print, you do it in a tray, but I don't have trays that are 50 by 70 inches. So um, yeah, rolling them through these troughs. Currently it's in the dev. Um, and once I've got it through the stop and the fix, we'll give it a wash and have a look at it. I've got the print here that we just made upstairs and I brought it down here to rinse in the water and I was just gonna show you the process, the way that I actually roll these prints through the chemicals. So place it in, rolled up, lift it, roll it back in on itself and then just turn basically, so you're kind of getting a really even spread of the chemicals if it's up in the troughs upstairs or obviously here in the water you do the same. So you can just roll the two together like this. 
and then back the other way. And here is the moment of truth. And this is a second picture uh, taken from the same camera in the same room, uh, pointing in a slightly different direction. So this is looking a little bit further to the right than the last picture. Um, but when seen together next to each other, it will create a diptych, giving a sort of fuller panoramic view of the key. Both of these pictures are shot onto direct positive paper, which is why everything's reversed in the picture. So normally you would create a negative, uh, and everything would be back to front, upside down, uh, and then when you make your positive contact print, it would flip it up the right way around. So you can see there on the text on the on the building, it's backwards. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just trim the edges off this um, both these prints. So you can see at the top there the vignette at the uh, in the corner. So I'm going to trim these down and see how they look. Got my two direct positive prints here. Have all been um, stretched and dried flat on this board. So basically, because it's fibre based paper, when it dries, it crinkles and kind of contracts loads and looks all wrinkly, and um, uh, you don't get that really nice flat finish that you get on resin coated paper. So, to combat that, um, I wet the print and then put it down onto a solid bit of board, this is 18 mil ply, uh, and then gum strip around the edge here. And then basically what happens is as the print dries and the gum strip dries, the print contracts, but the tape holds it in place. So you get this really nice flat image, um, print, uh, flat print on the board. A bit like how you'd stretch a canvas, basically. So these are now ready to put on their frame and be held up, hopefully. We're now going to attempt to make a second camera obscura. Uh, in this room, which is just below the other one actually, it gives us a slightly different view of the key. Um, this room is a little bit bigger, so it's going to make life a little bit easier. We've got this room pretty much blacked out now, so more cardboard and card and gaffer tape um, has made this room pretty light tight. Here's our lens, looking out onto the key. And here is the image projected onto the board. You might notice that we've got a way bigger projected image here. It's because we're using a different lens. This is a single meniscus lens, um, different to the process lens we were using before. You can see how big the image circle is on this lens compared to the other one. Because covers all over the room, ceiling, floor, there's the clouds, all across the walls. The only problem about this lens is because it's a single element lens, it's uh, nowhere near as sharp as the big lens that we were using earlier. So just to help with that a little bit, I've um, made a little aperture. So this is just um, a can of lemonade, the hole drilled through it, shoved to a bit of board, and that's gonna go over the lens like that. Um, and that will reduce the size of the aperture and make the image a little bit sharper. We need a longer shutter speed, um, but that's fine because we've got all the time in the world. So 
Obviously this is different to the last pictures that we made. Um, this is shot onto normal photographic paper making a paper negative. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is take it back to my studio, uh, set up an enlarger of some sorts and contact print it into a positive. I'm in my studio now and the plan is to make a positive print um, from the giant paper negative um, that we made at the customs house. So what I've got set up behind me here is a kind of giant makeshift enlarger. Um, so I'm going to roll out the uh, fresh piece of photographic paper here on the table and put the negative uh, face down on top of it and then with these two studio lights with soft boxes on that I've hung from the ceiling, um, we're going to expose the paper and make a positive contact print, hopefully. I've never tried this before, this is a new system, so uh, hopefully it works. So I'm just uh, re-wetting the paper negative. So if you're making a contact print from a paper negative, uh, you can do it in a number of ways. If you're working in a dark room uh, and your negative is dry, then you can use a sheet of glass to make a contact between the two. Um, but because we don't have a sheet of glass that's big enough to cover this, um, I'm just making it wet and that creates a really nice contact between the two sheets of paper and hopefully it will give us a slightly sharper image. Okay, so we've got our first piece of paper on the table with the emulsion side up and we've got our paper negative on top with the emulsion side down. Uh, so it's time to make an exposure. Three, two, one. Okay, so let's develop that and keep our fingers crossed. So I'm just processing this print now. It's just been through the developer. Now it's in the stop. And this is the positive print that we've just made. And we'll take the negative. Hopefully it will come out. It's looking all right, looking pretty good. Lots of kind of weird marks and stuff on it, but that's to be expected for this process and embraced for that matter. And uh, yeah, we'll just stop this, fix it, and then have a look in the light. Uh, and here is our processed positive print. You'll notice on this print there are all sorts of stains and marks. Uh, and various bits of distortion on the print. This is really just a byproduct of this process. As the negative is wet, um, when it goes down onto the fresh sheet of paper, um, it does help to create a kind of contact um, between the two, which gives you a nice sharp image, but it leaves all of these marks behind. Um, if you wanted a really sort of crisp, clean contact print, you could just use a giant sheet of glass um, or Perspex or something like that. Um, but there's something about these, these, these marks that have been left behind that, that I quite enjoy. Um, it gives a certain atmosphere to the print that you don't get with a really sort of pristine um, uh, and resolved uh, contact print. Negative, positive. Negative, positive. Negative and positive.